Yeah, it's hot. When you get going, though, it's, it's a nice, cool breeze. How was uh, your shoulder doing since the accident? Eh, it's not bad, actually. I didn't notice it. <laughs> it's funny, your teeth are like white, 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 and the rest of your face is <laughs> shit brown. <laughs> I think you're about the same. <laughs> I was like, I'm like this. Truck, and I, truck. And, and then the trail just went poof. And I was like skidding oh, no. like, into Pascal. And both Dan's OK. He's got that. Clear chest protector. That's okay because he's way the hell out there. Yeah, exactly. He's in front of everybody. <laughs> it's always good. I didn't have any dust. Dan's meek and dust. That's where he goes fast. He doesn't let anybody pass him. <laughs> it was a blast. Like just riding through town was fun. And then you hit the canal. It's just dirt, tractors, trophy trucks, buggies. <laughs> You're ripping through that, kids are running, dogs are chasing your ankles. Just coming out of town, we got mobbed by a bunch of kids. And they were asking for our autographs, which is pretty funny. I don't realize that we're a bunch of amateurs. But uh, yeah, it was, it was really funny. There was a few people dotted everywhere. But I can imagine on race day in the canal, it's just going to be lined with people. It's like a stadium in there. It was pretty, pretty cool coming out of there. The Baja 1000 is a desert race that takes place in uh, Baja, California, Mexico. This year, it's a loop, roughly 630 miles in length, so it's one of the shortest races ever, but uh, by no means uh, the easiest. There's the danger of the race itself in racing a motorcycle. Um, we're, we're going through some rocky areas, some sandy areas, um, you can crash your bike and get hurt. Uh, people die sometimes. It's basically a desert race uh, involving uh, many types of vehicles, motorcycles, even uh, motorcycles with sidecars, uh, trophy trucks. Everything in there, uh, something for everybody. There's no barrier keeping them a certain distance from the track. Uh, it's really like the Wild West, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing. Get dirty. We'll wash them tonight. I've been living in Tokyo almost nine years now. Time has gone by really quickly. I find I was only supposed to be here originally for two years, and uh, it's already been nine. A typical day in Tokyo um, starts with uh, my alarm going off at about quarter to six. And then I uh, hop on my bike, and drive to work. I try to get to work for about 7.30 in the morning. You know, my colleagues would laugh at that, um, but uh, I sincerely do try to get there for 7.30. And from there, just uh, on the phone, uh, checking emails, reviewing orders, uh, doing my regular routine. It's uh, a full day, not necessarily an exciting one, but uh, that's about it. At lunchtime, as often as I can, I try to uh, go to the gym or go for a run around the palace uh, just to, uh, to exercise. Obviously, working uh, all day long it doesn't leave a lot of time to, uh, to get in shape for the race. Uh, really excited about, uh, about racing the 1000. It's been uh, a dream of ours to do uh, a big event like this uh, since we were teenagers. Yeah, Pascal and I have known each other for uh, 
a number of years, since we were about uh, maybe 16 years old. We worked uh, on the machines, cutting the grass of the golf course and uh, playing golf and dreaming about uh, riding motorbikes pretty much. You can go really fast, I wouldn't, but there's so wouldn't have been able to do it without somebody like Pascal who had the energy and the same enthusiasm for the whole project as I did. Maybe I'm still a kid. I don't know. Um, I'm a police officer in the beautiful town of Bizano, Alberta. I've been doing this for 13 years. Been uh, all around Alberta for about 10 years. I spent four years in, uh, in Ontario. And now I'm back to Alberta. And uh, it's a great place to be. I like to uh, put or have challenges. I think that's kind of what drives me and uh, gives me goals to, uh, to reach. Looking forward to, uh, to go over there. And as you guys can see, it's, it's, uh, it's winter here and it's cold. Last November, Anthony uh, is a great, great friend of mine and we uh, kind of grew up together uh, back home around Montreal. And uh, he said, um, I've got a goal that I want to accomplish. It's to go to the Baja. And right away, you know, I, I started shivering. I know that's a pretty big race. And it's called the, the Baja 1000. It's in, uh, in Mexico. Uh, we have one bike, one registered bike that has to make it from uh, checkpoint one to the last checkpoint, which is the finish line. So from the start to the finish, it's, it's a big loop that we'll be doing. What we were thinking of doing is, is four legs. So each person would have to ride for about six or seven hours. And uh, there's gonna be four riders and we're gonna be somewhere situated along the path for the, the track and we're just gonna, you know, change rider and keep the same bike. Our main goal is to finish the ball. It's one of the most dangerous race that you uh, you can go to. Uh, you know, we've been biking for many years, but never to that level. Garrett, one up there. Garrett, I'm on. Pascal was down in my brother-in-law's motorcycle shop in Brooks and uh, mentioned he was going and he needed riders and my name came up and he, they got a hold of me and it was, uh, yeah, I, you know, I've always kind of wanted to go to it. Something different. Yeah, just making sure everything's good to go and we haven't forgotten anything. And, and uh, so, yeah, I think we're prepared. I've been many countries racing before and more of a International six days, but I've never gone to a desert race, so I figured go try. I started riding when I was about seven years old. I lived on a farm in southern Alberta, so it was either you know, all I did was ride my dirt bike or shoot my guns. And uh, by the time I turned 16, basically got a driver's license. That meant I could uh, go off on my own and I started racing. I went to France in 01 and Brazil in 2003, which is pretty similar in the sand to here. So I typically get out two or three times a week and just about every weekend. So I'm a nonstop rider. It's kind of what I like to do. Um, let's say two days ago, we, uh, we got an email uh, saying that a fellow was uh, pre-running his sections of the Baja 1000, and uh, he went a little bit off course, and he ended up in the, in the wrench area. And I guess there's a big uh, drug problem over there, and uh, when he drove in, he got, uh, he got actually shot. So it's, you know, like you wonder what's happening there, you know, and as a, as a writer, you know, like I'm, uh, you know, like you don't want these things to happen. So 
uh, whether he was with a group or he was by himself, I have no idea, but uh, it still happened and, you know, and we want to make sure it's not going to happen to us. So. We had a little situation yesterday, actually. Uh, one of the fellow in the team, uh, Bert Peterson, uh, dropped out. So there's only uh, three of us. The trail rider down there getting shot because he was riding off the course. That spooked him a little bit. He's got uh, three children and a business. and all. He, uh, He's been riding all his life, too. So uh, yeah, it, uh, it would have been a good, good thing to have him come with us. There was three of us, but we uh, managed to work uh, last night and uh, made some phone calls, and we found another rider. Dave Hart's going to replace uh, Bert. I just got a text message from Dave. I did not sleep last night. I'm super stoked. Thanks for letting me race. I'm David Hart, and this is the dumbest thing I've ever done. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, Dave is in for sure. That's great. Oh, we had a fantastic day. Just fantastic. Up at 5 a.m. On bikes at 6. Uh, started at uh, mile marker uh, 220. And as you can see right now, the crew is helping our crew get our truck. Four days ago, I guess we found out that one rider wasn't able to make it. I was asked, and I guess I uh, volunteered somewhat as well, <laughs> to go down and step it up now and race. When Pascal approached me about a year ago to race this event, I thought he was nuts. Um, I hadn't been on the bike enough. My training actually consists of, uh, we've done a lot of mountain biking this past summer, some dirt biking, and that's what I'm relying on is the muscle memory and general fitness from mountain biking, slight dirt biking, those types of things. A lot of people say, Dave, you're an environmental guy. How can you dirt bike on your weekends? I'm, uh, I guess, an environmentalist by trade, an adrenaline junkie somewhat by background. <laughs> Racing the 1000 in a buggy or a car, super fun, be awesome. Racing it on a bike, you're pretty exposed. You know, we, we knew that the point uh, for this race is, is not to win. Uh, I mean, we can't compete against uh, teams with multi-million dollar budgets and whatnot. The point is to have fun, both for the racers and the support crew, and that's very important. Not only do we want to finish the race safely, but uh, we want everybody to have fun as well. So it's, it's, it's all about having fun with friends and family, so that's why I'm really happy my, my brother and my, uh, my dad can make it. My role on the team for the AJN Racing is team managist. <laughs> the, the role of team manager came, you know, as sort of necessity, and I, I, I adopted the role willingly too. So um, I've been trying to deal with uh, all the stuff from making the t-shirts, the jerseys, uh, getting them designed, all the way to uh, having, you know, camera crews uh, follow us, to uh, making sure all the parts come on time, ordering the GPSs, all this stuff, you know, coordinating it so that we have the smoothest, uh, smoothest um, time going down there. Es el luchador que amo. I'm the father of uh, uh, Anthony Nicodemo and Marco Nicodemo, and we're on the trip to Baja to uh, live out a dream of Anthony, is to uh, do the Baja 1000. Tyler, the paramedic for the crew, he and I met in grade seven, 
started mountain biking together. He thinks it's awesome. Like, anytime you can do an adventure that can change your life, it's always fun. You may as well embrace it. He's fully supportive, fully on board, thinks it's hilarious. You know, Tyler was my best man at my wedding and vice versa. We grew up biking together. It's nice to have a paramedic on board, and that also puts my wife's mind at ease. Um, I had to talk to my wife, you know, about it, but uh, she knows me, so she, she agreed on it. I kind of got roped into the Baja without much uh, choice. My husband decided he wanted to be a part of it because his best friend Anthony decided this was one of his lifelong dreams, and uh, unbeknownst to me, it was a, a pretty big deal. So when Pascal suggested that he wanted to do this, he sounded really excited, and I just said, yeah, if it's something you want to do, go ahead. Little did I know it was such a production at the time. I think he's always had a, a sort of penchant for finding a thrill. He's always been into uh, extreme sports, anything adrenaline rush. My name's Pauline Watt. I am 21 years old. I... <laughs> <laughs> Serious stuff here. Tell, tell them who you are, how old you are, and what's happening. Where, where, where are we and what are we doing? Where are we? We're in Brejo. Brejo? Okay. <laughs> You're all sweaty. I don't want that There's one. nobody here. It's just a camera. Go. Okay. Uh, when Dan's racing, I got to admit, I was slightly nervous, but I know the guy, when I go trail riding with him, he's really cautious. I gotta admit, I'm kind of get really competitive myself and certainly want him to make sure he does really good and gets top five and get a little bit too racy as a racy mom, like one of those awful hockey moms. I'm a dirt bike mom. <laughs> I like it when he does really good. He's dominated. He's gotta move on to other things. <laughs> I like having Claudine here with me. Uh, and to be honest, she wouldn't have let me come by myself anyway, so I had no choice. She's been coming to everything with me since we got married. And however she says, she likes doing this, so it's not much of a chore to get her to come. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, everybody's been preparing their own way. Being in uh, Tokyo, I, I, unfortunately, I don't have uh, the areas to go to practice enduro, so I've been uh, trying to hit the motocross track as often as I can on the weekends, uh, entering some local uh, small races. If you look at guys like Pascal and uh, Dan, I mean, they have the Rockies uh, available to them, so they've been going there all weekend and, and that's been uh, great uh, preparation for them. Every second day I got out and, you know, for an hour or two, or quite often in a weekend for much longer, you know, six or seven hours at a time. So Pascal, Anthony and Dan have been training. They've known they're going to do this race for a year now. Uh, so they've been in the gym, hitting the weights, riding the bike as often as possible. Myself, I'm in a slightly different situation. Uh, I wasn't racing, so any tra <laughs> training, if you will, was just to go pre-riding, hang out in the desert, camp, drink beers, ride my bike, my motorbike for a while. Um, I'm nervous about my lack of training. I know the rest of the team, they committed a year ago. So they've been on their dirt bikes, they've been in the gym, muscles are good, they're all strong. That's where I am nervous, is I haven't been hitting the weights hard, uh, haven't been riding my motorbike as much as those guys. Uh, are we ready? I don't know. I, I hope we are. Uh, I'm sure we will. We're leaving uh, in four days from now. We're actually going to get to Mexico in uh, different ways, because uh, I guess there's four of us. Pascal, Dave, and Dan are going to be driving down from Calgary, Alberta. The three riders and part of the support crew are going to cross into the U.S. in the morning. On the support crew, we have Tyler, the paramedic, Dan's wife, Claudine, the camera crew, and myself. We're scheduled to ride nonstop down the west coast to Salt Lake City. That's where we're going to rest a few hours before we drive into California. Anthony's coming from Japan, so he'll be flying to uh, Los Angeles. 
going to meet in San Diego. Probably camp out at some Walmart before we actually cross into Mexico the next morning. In San Diego, on uh, I believe the 15th in the morning, we'll be crossing the border to Mexico all together. <laughs> This big is either the Calgary Stampede or NASCAR. In Sonata, November 20th, day before the race day. Give it to yeah, Dan. Yeah. has a maximum of 31 hours from the start line to the finish line. And uh, if you're a starter, that's what you want to aim for, is to finish the race in those 31 hours. Or else you're disqualified and you're, you, you're considered uh, not, not a finisher. They call the Baja 1000 the granddaddy of all desert races. Uh, only half of the racers actually finished the race. Our plan is that in the morning, at uh, just a bit past 7 o'clock, Anthony is going to start the race. Then the first handoff is going to be to Pascal, and Pascal will take the bike and give the bike off to Dave. He's going to ride the loop and going to hand the bike off to Dan, who's... Uh, our plan is for him to finish the race and hopefully be back to the start line by, uh, by sunrise. If Dan gets ready, uh, tired, we have a contingency plan where we have a checkpoint where we can set up a trade between Dan and my brother so that my brother can take it home. On every bike, the signal is transmitted to a central station. Uh, that's called the weatherman. The weatherman is, and they, with the, the tracking location, they can sort of tell you if your bike is doing okay or if it needs help or something like that. They can send uh, support for that person. It's the lifeline really between the riders and the support crew. I'm just concerned for everyone's safety for the most part. Uh, the desert's full of cactus, rattlesnakes, um, crazy people digging big holes for motorbikes to fall into. I really, really hope that uh, they go, they have a really good time, and everyone stays safe. My biggest concern is, is somebody getting injured or thrown in a Mexican prison. Last week, I don't think I've actually slept well for one night in about five days. And Pretty excited now. Anytime you can do an adventure that can change your life, it's always fun. You may as well embrace it. I, I really wanted to work on on a big adventure. If that goes well, it should be an Ensenada around sunrise. I'm hoping. Riding never really ends. It's always part of your life, no matter what one way or another, so I'm just a bike junkie, but I imagine I plan on riding as long as my body lets me ride. Yeah, it's the fact that today we have more information on the attempted robbery. Go ahead with the more information. Uh, there's apparently four uh, Mexican nationals in a 
Uh, copper colored Jeep Cherokee, older style. Okay, 555, five, 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 copy. Where the hell you got me? I'm asking for information on 1206. 1206, please. <laughs> <laughs> Usually it's coffee with maple syrup. For Pascal, it's maple syrup with, with coffee. coffee. <laughs> Here, buddy. Well, that should be good. A little coffee. We're going to make up uh, some race breakfast here for Pascal of. Uh, you want a scrambled egg, but he has at home, so we're going to have uh, sausage, scrambled eggs, coffee, tomatoes, cheese, and hopefully that does the trick to power him through. I think, I think I found my uh, race underwear. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> I think these are... Marco to Pascal, do you copy? Marco to Pascal, do you copy? Listen up, uh, we're at the starting line. Anthony is scheduled to depart in 22 minutes, so, so far there's no delay. Stand by. He just got one now. Got one? Yeah. Manages to support crew 287 x do you copy? That's not for the race. Hey, everything's flying by. Hopefully the race will fly by too. It's already here. We're ready to go. How do you feel for him? Do you think he's the, you feel he's ready? Are you worried I about him? I think he's ready. I think he's ready. He's probably a bit jittery. Uh, he's probably a bit nervous. But obviously, uh, once he gets out there on the trail, everything's going to go away. It's just going to be him and the bike. All he has to do is keep it up straight. And things should go well. You know, the only thing is to do is look forward. And I mean, that, that, that's pretty much you got to do in this race, I think. And as long as we get the handoffs off and you know, keep the bike in check, then everything should be good. Support crew 287X, do you copy? Anthony just passed race mile 120. He was going 21 miles an hour at race mile 112. Stand by mile 140 for the first handoff. Do you copy? Marco to Pascal. Stand by for changeover. He's coming in. We got him. All right, let's go fast. We got this one. Over. Sat phone's in there. Okay. Okay. How tired are you? I'm fucking tired. Coming down that ridge, yeah, it's so many switchbacks, and it's all literally rocks like this. Really, it was longer than I expected, because <laughs> uh, there was a section that I didn't actually plan to do. Coming down this uh, ridge over here, there's loads of switchbacks and rocks and everything. 
but uh, it all went well. I, I stuck to the plan, just went slow and steady, got passed by everybody basically at the beginning, and then uh, started catching them up slowly. Some people were breaking down on the side, some people were uh, just <laughs> ran out of steam, so I was pleased. It was good stuff. And I got here when I planned to get here, so good. all went to plan. Good. How do you feel uh, for having done your, your part? Do you feel like relief? I feel relief. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing I have left to do is support, and that's fine with me. <laughs> the trophy trucks are the the big trucks with you know million dollar sponsorship and with helicopter following them. Eventually, along the course in the 690 miles, they'll be catching up to us, and uh, that's what we uh, need to be aware of and uh, look look back more often, I guess. And, because they're they're there for the championship. Okay, so uh, you guys can head over to race mile 280. I repeat, meet the rest of the crew at checkpoint two, 280. Way to go, guys! Good job. One X guys, oh, crazy, huh? That's mind blowing, man. I don't even know how you go that fast. <laughs> how fast you figure they're 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 riding? Well, the loop he did, like my loop, is 120 miles, and uh, he did it in two hours. So he's doing almost 100 kilometers an hour through those whoops. It's mind blowing. It's crazy. I don't know how. I'm hoping to do it in six hours. <laughs> we'll see. One third as fast as them. Oh well, that'll be good. <laughs> Note from my wife from right before I left Calgary. Bring that with me. Little ride safe. It's nice to have those things, eh? Yeah, she's, I'm uh, sure she's on the internet right now watching where we're at. So. Hey, you guys, you'll get the full Baja experience this way. Nighttime with trophy trucks. Why didn't I try a hair scramble in Alberta for my first old race? <laughs> <laughs> Manages to 287X support race mile 280. Do you copy? Marco to support crew at race mile 280. Do you copy? Yeah, we got pass coming in. We got him. Let's get everything ready. Come on, guys. It's our time to shine. Go. Over. Is it him? Good work, buddy. Candy's in the corner. Oh, uh, yeah, let's see. It's the cloud and it's still here to see it yeah. Yeah, we I can't believe it. You can be. Oh, you, do that? you look like the lost. So we had to change the guys. Anthony, yeah. we have one problem. Mark 7 is not filling anything anymore. We're not on the list anywhere we're, on this part. We're 209. Tell them we used to be 209X. Okay. okay. Remember that. So we better put some gas right now. Do we have? Back of the Dakota. Where's the Dakota? Okay, I'll go get that. Is that good for you? Oh, it's your day. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. Change that to 20 and check it out. 
Where's the uh I got the nut? Where's the headlight? So baby? Which number are you? 209 X if I need it. Alright, seven bits, this is 209? 209 average. Our race number has changed. 209X is now 287X. Please service 287X. Do you copy? Oh, no way. How were the trophy trucks when they passed you? Oh, my God. It's good. There's an helicopter coming right over me. It's like 20 feet over the top of me. It's scared and <laughs> sorry the shit out of me. <laughs> I was pretty happy to see you guys, though. Yeah. So. Yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. good. Oh, that was really good time. Jeez. It's done. Yeah. It's done. It's done. Well, well we it's got almost it. done. Yeah, exactly. Our sections are. Done. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure Dave will uh, will do well and yeah. then we'll uh, He's really bring nervous. it home. Yeah, I was nervous too. You should have seen me. I went to the washroom about five times before <laughs> you showed up, and just when you showed up, I went to the washroom. You went again. Yeah. Yeah, but I went it was twice while I was riding. <laughs> <laughs> Good. There were so many booby traps the first 40 miles. I got a few booby Did traps too in the middle of nowhere. Really? I thought like for sure nobody would do anything. They made a little jump. They put like boulders right in the middle. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> That's awesome. Who needs to get a hold of score operations? So wait, what are you putting in there? A feminine panty liner. You put it right over your forehead, so when you sweat, it doesn't uh, go down into your goggles. It's uh, cheap and effective. Okay, usually I like my panty liners in the same color as my helmet liner. Then they don't look as weird when they fall down in your face at the gas checks, but I'll go with what I have. And never have an embarrassing moment. Let's go watch some racing. I'll be new to what we did pre-riding because obviously it's going to be dark all the time and now that all the big trucks are out on the course in front of us, it's, I think it's probably going to be pretty dusty. So I'll be taking it pretty cautiously and hopefully we all get home safe. Status of 287 X-ray, status and speed. This is 287 X Chase. Okay, so we're not looking for him across or off the list. Weatherman, this is 287 X Chase. Can I get a status on the booby trap in San Felipe, please? Okay, the, the booby trap in San Felipe has been knocked down. The federal police took care of it. And, uh, all done. It's down. We still have the other booby trap uh, going up to Mike. Six mile incoming, coming over a hill. There's a big booby trap, and the way I recognize where it is, it's uh, got a big bonfire on the right side before the booby trap. Eight or one. What's the status on it? Whatever you have, Jeff. Weatherman, can I get a confirmation on 287 X-ray, please? They can see where you've been, but we can't find you on IRC. You have to go through the system. Uh, I do not copy. Please repeat. Weatherman, weatherman, can I get a status on 287 X-ray? I just got word from weatherman that Dave is still moving. He made it around the loop. So get ready to get him uh, up at checkpoint three. Stand by for more information. Over. Marco to support. Do you copy? Okay, guys. Dave is at race mile 477. Uh, you should be coming in any minute. Let's get two guys out onto the track to wave him in. 
and uh, get everything ready. Our boys coming home, guys. Let's go. It was tough, it was fun. But every time there was jumps built, they had fires on either side. And then there was like a blue rope that they put up to measure who goes farthest. It's only 9.30 now. Hey, it's 9.30 now. It's hours, eh? Yeah, an hour faster now. Yeah. We got calls on the radio that they said that there were there was a, a booby trap in front of San Felipe that people had dug a pit and that two riders had gone down and they were actually getting the police involved because it was so big. San Felipe was madness. Like, the whole course was lined with fires down there. It's just, it was unbelievable. People, it was crazy. typically how it works in motorcycles. 287X Race, this is 287X Chase, do you copy? Dan or Anthony? 287X Ray Race, this is 287X Ray Chase. Dan or Anthony, do you copy? If you can hear me, give me a call so we can get you. Over. 287X Race, this is 287X Chase, team manages. Dan or Anthony, do you copy? If you hear us, can you give us a call on the sat phone so we can get you? Do you copy? 287 X-ray, do you copy? Dan or Anthony, can you can you give us a call? Do you copy? night uh, expecting them to maybe show up around one or two 
Uh, but obviously, you know, we don't know what's happening. Communication is uh, is not good here. Our cell phones don't work. Uh, Anthony has the sat phone one, and the writer, which is Dan, has the sat phone two. So it, the communication is very difficult. So we don't know what's happening. but now I'm, I'm fine. Fuck, we did it. I know. We did it. Marco from Pascal. The package has arrived. <laughs> he does. He's good. Life goes on. Next step. Next step, yeah. When you say you're going to be in at five hours, you call the wife and let you know if you're going to be late a little. <laughs> so I was a little nervous. <laughs> so then, <laughs> what happened out there? Ah, it started off really good. I uh, made a quick stop, uh, stiffened up the suspension for the loops, got into a pretty good rhythm, and then uh, all of a sudden I got a disco light in the front end, and the light shut off eventually. So. I was uh, kind of sitting there in the dark, so I rode my my section with uh, 35 watts or whatever it is. And about uh, 90 miles to go, the the battery finally let go on my headlamp. It was done, so I rode most of it with just the stock headlight. It was awesome, painfully slow. It was. We got through. We're all done now. So we made it. Mission accomplished. <laughs> Under 24 hours. No way. Yeah. What? Do you want? Do you want to see it out of the bag? Anthony, all that effort, all that money. And we got a pin. <laughs> Finisher Baja 1000. Finishes. It's not about getting a finisher's pin or a trophy, not at our level anyway. It's about experiencing something you don't see every day. It's about getting that nervous adrenaline rush at the start of the race and going through the whole process with friends. It's about breaking out of the routine of day-to-day -day life and testing your limits. 